quarterback, number 19. This is the Mike Trevisano Show, live from the Hooley House in Manor on News Radio WTAM 1100. Bernie, Bernie, oh yeah, how you can grow. Well, we're live at the Hooley House in uh, Menor, and uh, number 19, Mr. Bernie Kozar is joining us. Bernie, how you doing today? I got bumped. I got bumped for that. Press conference, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, <laughs> even ESPN uh, thought that there was something going to come out of that press conference. They were covering it live. They stayed with it for about three minutes, Bernie, and then they dumped out of it. Well, I, I almost drove off the road laughing at you for your comments after the press conference. So yeah, it's your yeah. fault. If I get, it's your fault if I get pulled over. I, 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 <laughs> I, uh, I, I apologize. I, I thought maybe something would come out of that, but as usual, uh, nothing came out of uh, uh, Berea. You know, part of what I, I want to give the benefit of the doubt, after a game like yesterday, I, I don't even think that needs rehashed. That was so disturbing. But um, in the coaching protocols, sometimes you have to talk to the players first, and maybe the guys weren't around today enough to, to individually tell them first before reading it. But uh, I, I think it's pretty clear that uh, we have to see what, what we have in Johnny just to get this, this stuff all behind us so we can move forward. Bernie, I said earlier, to me, uh, listening to Petten's press conference after the game, and he said, yeah, guys were flying around. Yeah, I was satisfied with their effort. I wonder if he was watching a different game than I was watching yesterday, Bernie. Well, again, I, I could pile on, and, and it'd be easy to do. Um, again, it's cultural. It's systemic. Um, I was joking around with – with uh, some of the executives in the league that I respect who mentored me, like Ernie Corsi today, and talking about um, the need for playmakers. Triv, me and you have talked about this at nauseum, that um, coaching and quarterbacks are victims or beneficiaries of the guys around them, and you need to have playmakers. Andy Dalton was not even afraid yesterday. He, they knew they were coming into our house. They knew they were coming in, and they were going to beat us. They were relaxed and enjoyed it and knew what was going to happen. That, that's, that, to me, is very disturbing. Bernie, uh, like right back with uh, Bernie Kozar here as we're live from the Hooley House in Menor. Uh, Josh Cribbs will join us in the 5 o'clock hour at the Hooley House here in Menor. Bernie, I don't want to sound like a teenager here or anything, but did you get sick to your stomach seeing a Cincinnati Bengal jump into the stands celebrating yesterday at Cleveland Brown Stadium? Well, just like we were talking about before news and traffic, there's certain codes. And, and again, I have a really good friend who who teaches me things and, and kind of mentors me. And he uses the word violations a lot. And there's codes of conduct and there's violations. And that's what I hope Coach Patton is doing with this quarterback situation. There's a code of conduct that you should talk about to the player specifically, eye to eye first, before it gets into the press. There's also, when you come to another stadium, now that Jeremy Hill kid, I will always remember him, okay? And as long as he's on the other team, he will be an enemy. And that is not acceptable to do that. Now, that being said, I would want that kid as my teammate that he could go into a stadium and have that type of, of stomach and have that type of courage to to win a game like that and just you know that's how you have to win football i know it doesn't sound politically right we're in a society today with social media and, and everybody's so sensitive about stuff football still gets down to an aggressive physical violent game and that's the game of football and if you want to beat belichick if you want to beat these guys uh, Pete Carroll, you have to play like that kid played. Bernie, what? it's Glenn. The, the 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 big problem with that and Jeremy Hill jumping into the stands is that Chris Kirksey was the only guy to get in his face afterward. Your thoughts on that? 
Well, again, the, the, as a coach, if you're a coach, if you're a any organization, you have to, the right answer to say is, okay, you need to stop them from getting in there. That being said, there are certain violations in life that call for uh, other other measures that maybe aren't socially right to say, or socially right to do. But Kersey was at a point in time yesterday where he had to do what he, he did, and I have no problem with what he did. And you're right, there should have been more people there. The other thing that confused me, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, please, okay? But usually when you play a division opponent and you got them smushed at the end of the game, you're not trying to show them up. Now, I could see other teams because sometimes you don't see another team for two or three or four years on the schedule. But every year you see Pittsburgh, you see Cincinnati, you see Baltimore twice. Cincinnati's got a 37-3 lead in the game. With about five minutes to go, Bernie, four minutes to go, and they're throwing the football, trying to score. Is that a little unusual with a division opponent? Well, again, this goes into the violation code book. Um, That is definitely wrong and something that I noted myself and have put in my head and would definitely address, and I will never forget that. I would never forget that. Bernie, I also said that today that to me there's something. It's more than talent. It's more than coaching. It's there's something going on out there. I don't know what it is. Do you have any ideas, or am I crazy? It, it, it's almost it, it, it's almost unfathomable. And for people to again, there's so many things happen in society that again, I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but that I take football so seriously you take it so seriously we care about it so much and that obsessiveness that compulsiveness um, is what Pete Carroll has that's what Bill Belichick has what Nick Saban has that's what Urban Meyer has this is these type of guys that um, you have to have that type of intensity and, and 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 it's just not carrying forward with the players on the field I know this is a difficult question to ask you. I'm putting you on the spot, so if you don't want to answer it, there ain't nobody going to object here, okay? But okay. you got an owner that looks like an idiot. you got a general manager that looks like an idiot drafting and signing free agents, and you have a coach that looks like he can't coach. Is, is that all correct? Well, first, the Rooney family got the Steelers in, 30, in 1939. It took a couple decades. Now, I don't have that much time left on this earth to wait a couple decades. But Jim Haslam's getting this team the last three or four years. There's, there's a learning curve that's obviously going on, and it's not working right now. And these guys know it, and players know it, the coaches know it, the front office knows it, the owner knows it. And, and to get it right is it's not happening right now. And I like a lot of the people over there too, but it's 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 this is a result oriented team. And and again, for right or wrong, with everything that's going on, you have to just want this more than anything in the world to win. And you have to know how to win. You have to know the culture of football. You have to know these codes, these violations, the protocols, ways to do things ways the players need to act, way the coaches need to act, way the front office needs to conduct themselves, the way you have to find players that have this genuine heart and passion that I see in so many fans, and I don't see it in other people that are actually doing it or supposed to be doing it. Bernie, we know Haslam's not going anywhere. Do you, do you keep Farmer and Petten? Do you change it again this quickly? I mean, is he stuck between a rock and a hard place here? We all want consistency in our lives. You know, we all want it. But right now, this this the only time the Browns and Eric Mangini is coming into town this weekend as the defense coordinator for the 49ers. Um, he, the only time we won every game in December was with me, him, and Lou Merletti. Um, helping out that one year. It's the only kind of Browns since they've come back and won every game in, in December. This 
this is going to be a big game for them, even though the Browns fans kind of circled San Francisco as an easy win. I disagree with that. Um, I think your real pride and what you, what you care about football, what you stand for, will be told by you and your actions over these next four games because it's easy to check it in. It's easy to not to go through the motions. It's harder to win these games when there's nothing on the line other than your personal pride. If you don't have personal pride from a, the whole side of it, it's, it's, it's going to end up being a nasty situation. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. <laughs> it's, uh, yesterday was rough, yes. yes. All right, Bernie, I appreciate the time. We'll talk again Thursday. That's good, Chip.